All right, good day everyone, and welcome to something a little bit different. Um, I meant to be releasing Terra Invicta Servants episode soon, but Dwarf Fortress just released on Steam, and I genuinely can't help myself because this game, this game is a legend. It has been around for years. I have played this for years, but it was originally created by um, uh, a very, 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 very small indie dev team of like two people um, using like ASC graphics, like. The original game, in its original version with no mods, uses like punctuation and letters as the graphical coding. But now it's released on Steam after many, many years of development uh, with a whole bunch of improvements and just it just brings some joy to my heart. So what is Dwarf Fortress? Dwarf Fortress is perhaps one of the most complicated games um, ever conceived. It's a game that basically the concept is you take a small expedition of dwarves in a fantasy uh, world, uh, you go and try and produce, uh, create a new fortress, stronghold for yourself, uh, grow, bring in new immigrants, build an economy, uh, and then die in one of the many horrible ways that Dwarf Fortress offers you. The, one of the great mottos of Dwarf Fortress is losing is fun. Uh, through its various patches, it's given you all sorts of strange, wonderful ways to die, um, including one patch that I remember where they accidentally um, adjusted the value on carp, the, the fish that were in streams, uh, so that they could rip the arms off dwarves who tried to fish them. That was a that was a fun patch. Anyway, the first thing you do in Dwarf Fortress, I thought we'd walk through, we'd have some fun with it. I don't think this will become a full series, but let's have a go. Um, first, you have to generate a world. There's an incredibly in-depth world generation that happens in the background of Dwarf Fortress. A, a randomly generated world with its own history, its monsters, its characters, civilizations, all generated from scratch. So we'll generate a medium world, I see no reason to do change any of this. Medium number of civilizations, who are people you trade with or fight with. Medium sites, medium beasts. Um, I'm going to go low natural savagery just to help us out a little bit. Uh, and everywhere for middle occurrence sounds fine. Uh, savagery is like how evil and dangerous. Like this, this game can have everything from like bunny rabbits to um, giant werewolf slug, dragon, monster, hybrid, cro like weird monsters that just utterly destroy you, zombies, like the, the world can be a terrible place with all sorts of crazy rules. So we're just going to low put this to low, which means there's still going to be some squares of the world that are very high. Just on average, it's not going to be quite as dangerous. Um, looks like there's a detailed mode here. Wow, okay, yeah, there is indeed a detailed mode here, which I would use in normal, but I'm just going to trust the default settings here and go create. So this is Dwarf Fortress creating a world um, and then running the whole history of that world. Uh, adjusting those um, items at the front can really change the world that you are generated into. So you can see it's generating a nice little world. Um, so for example, a world with a history of like five years or no civilizations is going to be far less settled, far less populated than one with 100 years of history and a normal amount of um Civilizations. You can see the years that are passing, so all these events that are happening. Um, and we're going to go play now, I guess. Which now takes the map that we generated and gets it ready for us to use as a world to play in. This is so cool. Also, I know this looks simplistic as an interface, but go look up, if you haven't played it, the, the basic interface of Dwarf Fortress, and you'll know how exciting this is. Um, the mode you want is Fortress. This is the main mode of the game. Adventurer is like um, basically like uh, most akin to playing like a pen and paper RPG adventurer game. It's in the base game. Most people play Fortress. Fortress is the main game. All right, uh, we will start the tutorial. And it looks like the, oh, okay. It looks like in tutorial mode, uh, I don't get to pick my initial site. And nor do I get to name my location. That doesn't sound like fun. Um, but you know what? This is just a demo, so I can build a fortress of my own on my own kind. In fact, if I do another episode, I'm probably going to start my own fortress. So, basic camera controls, fantastic. Let's zoom in and out. That's pretty... Uh, what is that? Done. All right, mining. Hockey M. Okay, so this is the map. Here are our starting dwarves. Here's a, we've brought a little cart. So we've got a little team of dwarves that are here to create a new thing. Looks like we brought... Um, 
a donkey, a cat, a bunny rabbit. Looks like we've bring some, brought some oxen, so quite a lot of animals in this Imbahak. Normally, if you custom design, you get a certain number of points to bring a certain amount of stuff. Uh, we'll have a look at all of this later on, but for the moment, we need somewhere to sleep, hide, be safe, etc. Now, Dwarf Fortress operates on different levels. Um, so... And then you designate things, right? So if I want to de if I designate these squares for mining, people will dig into the mountain. So where do I want to dig into the side of this mountain from? Probably over here. So if I or over here, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to dig down immediately anyway. So let's just and this is going to probably become my trade caravan sort of area. So for the moment, I'm just going to dig in through here. Uh, cool. Oh, and this is oh, this is a stairwell. It wants me to dig a stairwell. So stairwells allow you to move up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to designate a stairwell. Great. Move up and down and build a stairwell. How do I move up and down in this one? I know what the keys are in the normal Dwarf Fortress, and uh, I don't hear. So just give me a moment. Okay, it really is as simple as mouse wheeling. So I can mouse wheel down a couple of levels and that'll dig some stairs and then I'm going to need to dig uh, some, just a passageway to get to the stairs. Fantastic, so my dwarves will be able to get there. Now what, basically, uh, dwarves are subterranean creatures. Um, they prefer to live underground. You can live above ground if you really want to. There's some challenge runs where people try and live underground for protracted periods. Dwarves hate it. They hate the outside. They hate rain. They hate sun. They hate everything about the world upstairs, except for the fact that there's some food and uh, wood and other stuff that's useful you can get up there. Stairways uh, are how you get up and down in your fortress. And what I'm going to do, just for a little bit of security, is at the bottom of this stairwell here, so my dwarves are going to go down a level, uh, then they're going to dig a like a choke point passageway of like two steps, something like that. And then I'm going to build another stairway up and down like that. And this is actually going to be my primary stairway. And I'm going to dig that like a bunch of levels down. Cool. So if I now unpause, my dwarves should now start digging that out. When you designate jobs, any dwarf which is like marked for that mission will do it during its spare time. Here we've got like a mining dwarf, it looks like. Um, who's having a fun time digging things with his pick and everyone else is doing not much. So let's pause again. Uh, we'll need a stockpile, it sounds like. So stockpiles, where you put your stuff, very simple concept. Um, it wants me to place an all stockpile. This is usually a bad idea, but for the moment, I guess it's harmless. Um, so let's just paint one here. We're going to have to move it eventually, but it's kind of happy with that. Uh, let's put it down. Done, done, done. Okay, that stockpile is now there for all. Uh, that just means we're going to put all our stuff that we need in here, which is fine. Uh, and then we'll need some wood. Now, this is very temporary for the tutorial. I'm going to want, obviously, to store my stuff inside where it's safe because I don't want people stealing stuff from me. Uh, so now I'm going to need to chop some wood. What have they made the hotkey for that? They've made the hotkey L for logging, I presume. And then what I do is, if I, again, if I want to chop down some trees, I find some trees. Uh, these things here are tree trunks, and you can see that if I go up levels, they're actually spanning multiple altitude levels all the way up to their, uh, their canopies. So these trees are actually very quite large ones, so hopefully we should get a good amount of wood out of them. And it gives you the idea... Very quickly, this is a very three-dimensional game. Now I'm just going to, for the moment, chop down the wood that's really close to base. Hopefully that fells some interesting stuff. Hopefully we have a lumberjack in this auto start. There's an axe sitting on the ground, if someone would be so kind as to grab it. Someone want to grab the axe and chop some... There we are, someone's grabbed an axe and is chopping some wood. Looks like it's almond wood, ash wood. And there we are, so we're dropping, uh, dropping wood on the ground. Easy as. And this will be our early building material. Um, wood is inferior as a building material to things like metal for a lot of purposes, but it's easy to get on a nice map. You could play, for example, um, Dwarf Fortress on a map that has no trees. Like, that is something you can do. Um, probably not 
advisable for a first playthrough, but you absolutely can. And since they're complaining about it, I'm just going to create a very small stockpile of timber. Wood. There we are. And now we've got to build some stuff. Okay, so it wants workshops. That's easy enough. So let's go downstairs. Looks like we have indeed dug some stairwells, which is great. And it wants us, us to start building stuff, basically. Uh, and I see no reason not to. But first, we're going to have to mine out some areas. Some corridors leading off in each direction from the central stairwell. Something like that. Not perfectly symmetrical, but there we are. And then we'll build some rooms in which the workshops can exist. But basically, I want to build a three-dimensional spine. Not worrying too much, because this is not a permanent one. This is just for showing off the game. And it wants us to build a carpenter's workshop. That's a, that's a reasonable decision. So basically, uh, we want to be able to turn wood into useful buildings. That makes perfect sense to me. How big is the workshop in this version of the game? So workshops, uh, carpenter. All right, that looks like a what, a three by three? So what we might do is uh, dig out a section here and put a carpenter's workshop in it. Let's do something like this. I like rooms that are segmented so that I can have like uh, security and stuff in them, but as in like I can put doors and stuff, but also close to stairwells. So that'll give me room for, this will give me room for a carpenter's workshop, a stockpile where I can tell people to put wood, and then maybe a stockpile for finished products, although I'm not sure where the finished product one will go yet. So this nice lad here, he'll dig out a room, and in that room I will build a workshop. Looks like the cat's prowling around. Cats are kind of handy. They have their own psychology. They're evil, evil gits. Um, in Dwarf Fortress, your dwarves can adopt pets. Uh, so they can choose to say, this is my pet, and they get very they get very happy when the pet's around, and they get sad if the pet dies. But uh, cats don't get adopted. Cats choose dwarves to adopt. Um, cats, cats can cause problems, but they're also fantastic. They kill vermin and things like that are important. Basically, if there's anything in a game that you think could exist, like uh, psychology, um, individual body parts, soap making like suturing, like if there's any sort of detailed mechanic you think might exist in a game, it probably exists in Dwarf Fortress. It's a bit nuts. So let's build a carpenter's workshop. Uh, probably the workshop. Let's build the workshop. Um, let's think about this from a, a min-maxing perspective. The necessary steps that we're looking at, I think we put the workshop in a corner and the stockpiles closer to the door because there will be more steps interacting with the stockpiles than with the workshop. Let's build it out of, yeah, we'll build it out of the micro client stone. So you can build buildings out of most materials. I mean, it depends on the thing, obviously. Like, if you're building a smelter, you don't want to build a smelter out of wood because it'll catch fire. But we built a carpenter's workshop here out of micro client stones. They picked up some of the stone left over from mining and did it. Now we need to add some tar. So workshop, you order it to do stuff, and my uh, guys will do it. Uh, I know that I'm going to need uh, a bed. And I'm going to have to get used to the new hotkeys. Did it, did it not do that? Oh, damn, I must have quit out of it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Creatures, items. Oh, okay, so I couldn't click them before because it was disabled by the tutorial. Okay, fair enough. You can access information from the Citizens button. See, all this new stuff, and I'm trying to do stupid old school... Okay, here's my Citizens menu. I got a woodworker, a miner, a mason, a metalcrafter, a fisher dwarf, a planter, and an expedition leader. That's not a terrible setup. Um, I guess that's good for a tutorial. Like, let's check out our miner. Here we are. 
Okay, so here's some details. Uh, this guy, he's 64 years old. He hates truthfulness. He has good intuition and social awareness. He's impatient. He's not musical, leisurely. He has no official position. He wants to drink booze and make stuff. Uh, he's good at mining and appraising, which is figuring out how much stuff is worth. Uh, these are all the things he, he, his emotions that he's feeling. You can also see his health problems, wound, treatment, hip street, description, individual items, the room that he owns, his skills, his personality, his great... In, uh, da, da, da. Likes to take it easy, negative views about things, he's rude. Like, these are incredibly detailed. There's, there's incredibly detailed modeling of dwarves in this game. All right, so we're going to close. It says close the information sheet. All right, so we do that. Alerts. This is an example alert. Okay, ignore, so we don't want to ignore alerts. Okay, all right. We want to dismiss the evil alert. I presume by right-clicking it. Yep, that goes away. That was intuitive. And then, Precaravan. I want to build a trade depot, apparently. Okay, so normally I would build trade depots later, but that's okay. So basically, um, every now and again, traders come to your depot and you sell them stuff and buy stuff. And what it's basically telling me is I don't have enough stuff with me to survive winter, which is not, normally I would just bring enough stuff to survive winter. Um, but that's okay. Trade Depot. We'll build a Trade Depot. We'll put it outside here with our like stockpiles of everything. There's no security around this or anything, but for the moment, let's just build it out of build it out of wood. Uh, and we'll need stuff to trade. All right. Cool. Uh, it says click the help button. I'll click the help button. Hey, they kept the line in. The game is open-ended. You can do whatever you choose. If you'd like a goal, try and become a barony, then a mountain home. More likely, your dwarves will starve unless you read the first few guides here. Losing is fun. We're not going to read any guides. No, that's no fun at all. We're just going to get started. Okay, so, triage. At the start of the game, you've got some dwarves, you've got some food, you've got some stuff. you got nothing else, so you're kind of, um, kind of in a bad way, and you need everything at once. Um... You need more. You need more food and a way to create food. You need places for people to sleep. You need to get your industry uh, rolling. Um, you you need everything at once. So, what are we going to do here? I think to start with, what we need is places to keep things. So let's get the miner busy. Uh, let's build a. I'm going to build below the. Below the workshops. Let's build on this. What's what's this? Chalk, gypsum, and rock salt. All right. Gypsum and rock salt it is. Um, I'm going to build hallways out in each direction. Oh. Sorry, I'm going to have to get used to the new hotkeys. It's going to take me a bit. We're going to get some stockpiling going. So I just want everyone doing something while it happens. So let's place this. Let's place two stockpiles here. I could even remove that square so there's a nice place to like that. So there's a place to walk through without being covered by anything. I need to get used to the fact that escape no longer confirms them. You're going to watch me get used to controls. That's basically what's going to happen here. Bugger. I'm just going to place one at a time. Except this is a wood stockpile. Great. And now can I... All right, I can. All right. I'm learning. Is there a quick way? To, I don't know if there's a quick way to hit accept yet, but it is what it is. Um, let's go, let's call this furniture, right? So what's now going to happen is we're going to, the dwarves will put wood here for the carpenter workshop to use. And when he's finished, he'll put furniture here. Simple enough. 
Uh, and to start with, we're going to need uh, a shit ton of beds and we're going to need two doors as the most basic security bef uh, possible. I'm not sure how quickly I'm going to be attacked. I know nothing about this Impark site because the tutorial chose it for me. And then I just want like a bunch of beds. Is there a way to re like automatically repeat bed? There probably is. I just don't know it yet. Four, five, six. How many dwarves do I start with? Seven. All right, make set, make make eight make eight beds. Great, so eight beds will give us somewhere to sleep. We're going to have a place to put stockpiles. And then beneath it, we're going to need a place to sleep. So let's put up downstairs. Okay. We can go down a couple more levels. And it looks like there's one level there for us to use as well. But that's like the reception area, so I don't want to overthink the reception area. Wood stockpile coming in, that's fantastic. Uh, and then we're going to need some food. So I'm seeing some berries here, straw, yeah, see, strawberries, cranberries. We can collect all that as like a very basic early source of food. So my plant guys will go and collect that. And we'll need a dining hall to eat in. So one of these areas, this, this I'm thinking might be a floor where we do some... Uh, some common common area type stuff. Even though the rock types are a bit random. So what I'm thinking is a like food stockpile, dining hall kind of setup. As people continue to laugh at me for using the old hotkeys. So let's we can always enlarge the dining room later, but let's make a basic, basic bitch dining hall for the moment. And I'm gonna put like a food and bev stockpile there to support the dining hall. And then we're gonna to need to, oh, he's making, he's, he's making his way through really quickly. We need to be able to make stuff out of, um, stone as well but for the moment let's just build some wooden tables uh, and some wooden chairs i will find a faster way to do that but you get where i'm going with this all right so i've got a lot of people who are currently busy doing all bunch of stuff but let's uh let's actually get ourselves somewhere to eat uh, so build structures, want doors and hatches, doors. Okay, we've got a bunch of doors. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some doors, some oak doors on our, uh, this is going to be our dining area. We don't actually need one on the stockpile. So we're just going to create uh, a stockpile here. And this is going to be a food stockpile. So we'll put all of our food storage there. And then when people are done, what we're going to do is because we don't want uh, to catch a bunch of diseases, uh, rubbish and refuse, we're going to put that. Uh, corpses, yes. Where do I get... I think we just turn on all refuse, right? All right, so refuse, this is stuff we don't like. So let's put refuse and corpses. We just dump them over here so that when people come to trade with us, they can see um, how nice and friendly our place is. Let's also just collect some more strawberries and stuff so we have something to eat. Once the dining room's online, I'm digging out. This is going to be where we build stone stuff. So this is going to be the carpenter's workshop. This will be the mason's one or whatever it's called. Dining hall and whatever, and then here these are going to be the first generation of bedrooms. They're a bit big and generous, but you know I'm going to be big and generous if we're going to die on camera. May as well die in style. And the carpenter is just making doors, which is exactly what we need him to do right now. Let's wait for someone to come in and build the uh, the door. And while we do that, let's go furniture. We built some tables, I believe. 
So let's just put some tables down. Looks like there's an oak table. Apricot table. So we built two tables. That should be enough for people. Uh, chairs. We built some chairs. Pear wood. And you can control what material they're made out of. But right at the moment, I just want to give my guys somewhere to eat that isn't sitting on the floor. They get, they're get they very annoyed if they're sitting on the floor. It's pear wood. And like we're being barbarians at the moment, making stuff out of wood when we could use good noble stone or even better, metal. Building things... Real dwarves, um, real dwarves make things out of metal. So this is now good enough to be our our dining hall. Pretty sure I can just designate all this and make that the dining hall. Uh, main hall. Done. Alright, so this is where they will now go to eat, and they'll be very happy about it. Cool. And then, we haven't dug out their bedrooms yet, but we will shortly. We have the beds for them, we don't have the doors, but we will soon have the doors. Just need the digging person to do their job. Looks like people are getting tired, but they can sleep on the floor for one night. Then we'll get back to it as soon as we can, you know, give them rooms. Um, I could just create temporarily create a, a barracks, but, you know, we're better than that. That is, as long as I built enough doors. I'm just going to set that to repeat for the moment, so he just builds a crap ton of doors. Now what I really need is the miner to, to wake up and dig me out some bedrooms. And then we've got the initial problem sorted. We're getting our food initially from just foraging the local environment. Where our building materials is the wood that we are chopping down. I don't have any security on the fortress yet. But we will shortly. If something comes to murder us now, it just, it just murders us. Now, Mr. Miner Dude... Um, yeah, you're annoyed after sleeping on a floor. Well, funny thing about that, if you go mine out the bedrooms, um, if you go mine out the bedrooms, then you can sleep in a bedroom. I'm going to con cease confusing you by removing some of your other mining orders. But really, this is all important. So, Mr. Miner Man, if you would like to start digging, please. All right, Miner Man has decided he's going to dig out the Mason's Workshop. That's okay. It means we can start producing stuff out of stone and our Mason's not going to be lying around, which is good. It's very weird playing this game with graphics. Like, I can actually tell what things are. Clearly, people, and because people who might not have played this before are going to be thinking, hey, it's basically RimWorld. I'm like, this predates RimWorld. It's a lot. RimWorld is, is really complex. Dwarf Fortress is just another level. Not quite as refined in some of its systems, obviously, but um, yeah. Stonework is going to be what we want. Let's let him dig out these spots. All right, let's build it out of microcline. Designate some stockpiles. This is a stone stockpile. And this is again probably a probably a furniture stockpile. And let's make some rock doors. Because we'll need those. Never have enough doors. And once we've got more doors, we'll go from there. Alright, apparently I've built a bunch of doors. Hey, our first bedrooms are finishing. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is for each of these bedrooms... 
Each bedroom for the moment is going to be really basic. It's going to get a bed, which is close to the door, so we don't have to worry about uh, wasting time on unnecessary movement. And then there's going to be a door. We'll put the microcline door there. Oh, I should put the stone door at the front of the floor. I will in a moment, but anyway, he's going to, he gets a stone door for the moment. And that's it. That's it for the bedroom at the moment. We desi well, I'll show you how to designate a bedroom in a moment. And then someone will sleep there. And each one will get one room. Eventually, we can put all sorts of furniture in them to make them feel happy. But for the moment, this is this is what they get. All right, so I've designated this a bedroom. I'm pretty sure I can then click who stays there. And of course, our expedition leader gets the first bedroom. So this is now his. He's very happy as a result, I presume. Um, but everyone is going to get a bedroom. Don't you worry about that. His door, his bed is in. He is happy. Also, I just I didn't check. Um... This map does have like a, does it have a river or just like pools of water? Because that could be a problem if it's only got, like, all right, well, clearly going up is not going to find me any more water. Uh, stagnant water, murky pool. Um, I'm not thrilled with that. Oh, wait, no, there it is. Okay, there's a, there's a brook. There's a stream. And look, there's a froggy, green tree frog. Uh, we could go kill it, but uh, we don't need to right now. Looks like our fisher dwarf is fishing. Okay, and is bringing mussels back, which is good. That's good. That's more food that we don't have to worry about. Uh, making rock doors. I'm going to repeat that for the moment, just because we need like a, an obscene number of doors. But we've now got two workshops going. We've got a food stockpile. Looks like the food stockpile is actually full, so I won't expand it right now because we're building bedrooms, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. We do want to expand it soon, just so our food is not exposed outside to, you know, things like the green tree frog that might want to, you know, steal it. Uh, yeah, I know what a zone is. All right, miner now has a bedroom. And I'll just keep, I'll just fill these out, designate, finish designating them. And then once everyone's got a bed, that's one more critical interest taken care of. We're just going to, we're just knocking them off as quickly as possible. And one of those critical requirements, by the way, is um, we're going to put a door made out of stone on the front of the fort uh, so that no one can just walk in and take our stuff. Now, yes, right now they can steal from this. Um, all of this is still like open because we don't really have that much stockpiling going on inside, but that's okay for the moment. The water source being a long way away means I might have some fun when it comes to planning my farming. I'm hoping farming works in this the same way it does normally because it requires almost drowning yourself. If, if nothing's changed since I played this, and it's a long time since I played this, um, Dwarf Fortress, one of the great ways to die in this game is water. Water is a fantastic way to destroy everything that you have spent your time building uh, because mismanaging fluid dynamics is a bitch and drowning everyone is funny. So we'll need to eventually irrigate to farm underground, which is this safe place to farm. We're going to stop making doors. I think we've made enough doors. And let's make some... Let's make some bins. Let's make some barrels. And let's make maybe two spare beds. Where's my option for bed? Did I move it up? Oh, here we are, up top. Okay, so apparently it promotes. Anyway, that just makes a whole bunch of stuff. Don't want the carpenter wasting his time. Meanwhile, the stonemason is building stone doors. For some reason, there are flies in here. I'm hoping that by making, um, oh no, it's barrels I need to make. Yeah, I'm making barrels, good. Let's make, in fact, let's make more barrels and bins. Or am I out of wood? I might, in fact, be out of wood, okay. So that's simple enough, just chop some more trees. Uh, clear felling the local terrain, there is no drawback. Uh, unless elves are around, they get annoyed. But for the moment, you know, just... Eat, drink, and be merry. Just chop everything down. Something has collapsed on the surface. That'll be a tree. You guys chopped down a tree and it fell on you is what happened. Good on you. Genius.
Uh, I didn't say our dwarves are the smartest. Dwarves are dwarves are uh, interesting creatures. Let's make four barrels because we'll need them, and then maybe one spare bed. Uh, looks like the bedrooms are coming along well, so I'll designate some of those and be back in a second. All right, mission accomplished. Everyone now is going to have a place to sleep. No one sleeps on the floor. I am good at this game. We've got like some tables where people can like eat. Now uh, we've got a food stockpile, which is, you know, I was originally thinking it was too small, and now in fact it seems uh, too big. That's, I think, because we've got these barrels. Barrels store a whole bunch of stuff in them. Um, and now we've got more barrels, we can store a whole bunch of stuff in them. So it looks like we've got a barrel full of seeds, barrel full of beer, barrel full of lobsters, mussel, fish, lampreys. Looks like our fisher dwarf is doing a good job of like trying to feed everyone for the moment. I still think I want to farm at some point. Uh, we've got a, we've got security in the form of a door. Like life is good there. Um, and then I think what I want is to move. Eventually, I want to move this stuff inside. Like I want to get. No, I don't want to dispose of the wood. I want to get rid of the stockpile. How do I get rid of the stockpile? I think I need to go stockpile menu, click, that's right, click, um, remove this stockpile. There we are. So that should move all the wood indoors. Fantastic. Now I appear to have some animals here. Uh, I presume that they need to like eat. So if I just say, hey, you guys can like eat the grass around here, so you can hover near the fortress, that should hopefully keep the animals happy. Apparently they're annoyed that they're in the rain. Like you're an you're an animal. You're an you're an, you're an ox. Like the rain is like oh sorry, you're not a ox, you are a yak. Uh, being in the rain should be part of what you do. Fisher dwarf is happy off by the brook. So what do we want to do next? I think the, the game was right to say, hey, do you want to build some trade goods? So we're building up for some more workshops here. Uh, we should put some doors on these workshops probably. So we'll put these stone doors that we're manufacturing continuously. I should stop door manufacturing eventually, but for the moment, um, I'm quite happy with the large number of doors that I am producing. I may in fact be producing or using more in my designs than I need to, but uh, I like doors. Doors allow you to control movement. And that makes me feel good about life. So yeah, I think we need trade goods. So we have something to sell when people turn up. Um, so we need some more workshops. Um, what sort of dwarves do we have again? Because I should make good use of what we've got. Here we are. I have a metal crafter, a planter. The planter at the moment is just collecting stuff. The fisher dwarf is just fishing. The metal crafter has nothing to do, nor does the mason at the moment. The miner is apparently making rock doors, which is why the mason doesn't have a job. So the miner should be mining. Um, that may shock people to hear. So now I need to work out something. What level, what Z level is the water on? All right, so this is the under of the water. This is the surface. So the water is down here on this level. Whole bunch of sand. Sand is promising because sand is really easy to dig through. So if I've got... I think I need a stockpile floor and then I need to dig out maybe a subterranean farm. That's probably what I need to do. So if we just build a stockpile floor, so it goes dining hall, workshops, bedrooms, down here, microcline. So if we build one floor down, this can become like, at the moment, this can be like a stockpile floor. So we'll build these large hallways. And we'll build like these overflow stockpiles. Just to bring all of our stuff inside. And also this is where, you know, this is stone that we can use to manufacture stuff. 
And then we need to start thinking about farming. And farming, if I remember correctly, requires um, you to make ground damp. Ah, but this is our security floor. So we're gonna need some doors here as like low tier security. Eventually we can do better, but for the moment, there we are, microcline doors. Uh, we could also build some walls or whatnot around our, outs, our exterior area, and we could do some external farming with just a wall for defense. That's another option. Uh, we have an awful lot of wood and stone. Maybe that's lower effort to start with. Do we want to grow some above ground crops with a and put like a fence around where our animals are? Because I could do that. So I could dig... I want to remove, I need to, I'll need to figure out how to do this, but basically what I want to do is at the moment there are these slopes, right? It just means there's a hill. You can walk up it. Uh, you can walk up to this level from that level. That's really bad if you then build a wall around this area. I have done this. You build a wall around an area. You don't notice there's a ramp and someone gets around your wall by going up, walking around and walking down because all you've done is attached a wall to a hill. They just climb the hill somewhere else, walk around, they're in your courtyard. I, I've done that many a time. Uh, it's dumb. Uh, but very easy to do. So maybe we do want to like fence some of this area off and have like an area where we can like store our animals outside so they can have some grass, have our trade depot, have that all inside a wall and then consider some interior farming. Maybe do some exterior farming while we're at it. Because like what would be required is it still through the build menu? Indeed, farm plots. Do I have any... Like, now, because normally I would... um. Normally I decide... You use points and decide what you bring, but because of this I'm being like, mate, I'll just use whatever you... Uh, whatever you brought me. Objects... No, how do I see how much, how many seeds or food I have? Give me, a, give me a moment to work it out. I need to figure out if we have any seeds for growing stuff outside. I presume we can collect some from the raspberry and, and whatnot bushes, but let me just check that. All right, so I think I've made some improvements here. Uh, the first thing is uh, dwarves uh, don't like drinking water. They're complete alcoholics. So what we can do here is we can brew a drink from plant, uh, I might do a couple of extract, just one or two extract from plants, see if we can get some seeds out of them. And then we're going to brew drink from plant. Um, can I set? No. Okay. Apparently that's not going to work. That needs glass. Anyway, uh, so we're going to make booze because uh, dwarves are massive alcoholics. They drink booze. Uh, we're building a butcher's workshop for any animals that are around and dead. And there's also a fisher dwarf workshop here to process the seafood that we've got into something that's edible because apparently dwarves won't eat raw fish. Don't, don't know why, picky buggers. Um, yeah, apparently you need to process and cook your fish. So that's what's happening. I'm moving my stockpiles indoors. You're aware of that. And then I've confirmed I don't have any seeds to grow stuff outside. So once this all gets moved in, um, I think indoor farming is going to have to be. I can feed myself for a while, just gathering food and whatnot. So my two choices now for main, main activity are fortifying the outside of the fort. That's one option. Uh, the second option is getting some uh, indoor farming potentially set up, which I'm kind of intrigued to do. Uh, I will check whether or not you still need to irrigate. Basically, my understanding is you need to dig out an area run water over, evaporate the water off, so you've irrigated the area, and then you can grow indoors. But I'm going to check that's the case before I, you know, go doing this, because what we're probably going to end up doing is draining one of these pools into an area to make it wet, um, and then making that farmable. In the future, we have an infinite supply of water here from this brook, and with an infinite supply of water, I can do some, I can do some interesting stuff from an engineering perspective, but it might be worth, in the meantime, in the immediate future, rather, using one of these pools to make it work. Leave it with me for a minute. 
Okay, so if you don't die immediately, you can get immigrants who turn up to your fort, and sometimes you wish you don't because they eat food and require more infrastructure just as you think you're getting things established. Uh, what I've drawn in this case is a doctor who will just do random stuff um, because uh, while he's fancy, I don't have any wounded at the moment. And I picked up a pair of additional miners, which is, just means we're going to dig a lot more quickly, which is handy. Because at the moment, I'm working on what's going to be our farm. Um, so farming in Dwarf Fortress requires either you have like some uh, nice uh, soil, underground soil that you can grow stuff in, or you can irrigate it by flooding it like I've talked about it before. Looks like we've got a bunch of sand here, so irrigating wouldn't have been necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway to show off the concept and possibly get myself killed. Um, so we're going to put a door here. Uh, microcline, as usual, will work just fine. And this pile of water, each water in this pool is, I believe, seven deep. I'm not sure why we've turned off the detail numbers, but 7 out of 7. So depth of a liquid is measured on a 1 to 7 scale. So what I've calculated is enough that the water should flow out and get to most squares in this farm area before it's drained. The door here should prevent, as long as we lock it and the dwarves aren't stupid enough to walk out, should cause the uh, should stop the water flowing into the stairwell, down through the rest of the fort and drowning everyone, which we wouldn't really like. Um, let's make a couple of rock mechanisms. I don't think we're going to need them because there's, there's a couple of ways you can do this using floodgates or by uh, brave digging and we're going to do the brave digging method. So we're going to wait for a miner to come up, finish off this chalk and sand. Um, this is coal. This stuff is very good. I want coal. And I, which means I need one more workshop spot, don't I? So I've got a craft dwarf here who's just making stuff for me to sell. I've got a machine dwarf, uh, machinist shop here to make mechanisms. A lot of the cool stuff you can make in this game are mechanisms. Let's go here and stop making those. And instead, we want to expand our. I want to expand my dining hall now that people are here. So we've built some, we're building some coffers as well, which are just nice little things to put in people's bedrooms because I was being nice to people. Let's build an extra four tables. And then let's just put thrown on repeat for a moment because we're going to need quite a few of those. And we're going to need another workshop spot in here. I could put it down on a lower level. Maybe with the dining hall. I don't see a reason not to. I don't think there's a noise problem associated. But what this is going to be is this is going to be metalworking central, right? So it's going to be uh, a place for us to. We're going to get. We're going to collect some coal. We're going to collect some iron, some metal ores, um, because what you use coal for is you use coal to fire furnaces. Unless you want to use magma, that's a whole another problem and a way to get yourself killed. Um, you use coal in order to fire furnaces, and you use furnaces in order to turn ores into metal and to turn metal into goods. So coal is really useful. The alternative is to charcoal burn wood, but it's better to just mine the coal. So we're going to stockpile that coal before we flood that area. So what, And I'll achieve that by making a stockpile in this area which is only for coal. I love having the additional miners. It is speeding this up considerably. And just in case anyone has spare time at the moment, what I'll do is create a stockpile right now. Accept, custom, I want... Is it in bars and blocks? No, it's not in blocks. There we are. Bitsum is coal. So we're just going to stockpile coal here. I'm pretty sure it was bitumous. And hopefully, if we've got anyone who's got some spare time, they'll come up and collect all this stuff. I'm going to cancel the making barrels for the moment. And hopefully someone will come up here and haul this stuff. 
I don't think there's a way. No. Um, anyway, come on, come collect the coal. Someone, someone collect the coal. You have, you literally have no job. Go, go, go grab the coal. I'm going to figure out how to grab the coal. Alright, turns out I had coal blocks rather than coal stone on, so I fixed that, and now everyone's collected the stone, which means we're at the most dangerous point in this fortress's history. The first point where we play with water and possibly get ourselves killed. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this spot here, and what we want to do is dig a channel. Like that. Channeling is when you dig from above down. What we want to do is make sure the door is locked. Here, so we click on the door. And we lock the door. Okay, the door is now locked. No one should go through that door. Someone should go upstairs and dig a channel, which will let the water flow down this passageway into this area here. Hopefully, um, irrigating. There we go. So someone's dug the channel. I'm still getting used to which way the mouse wheel goes. The water should now... Is there a way to change speed, by the way? Do do do. Show numeric li liquid values on. There's probably a way to, to show speed. But anyway, see, the water is now flowing. So, fluid mechanics. The water should now flow, and as long as it overall reduces to a net level of 1 or 2 per square, it will be evaporating. Plus, we'll have some wastage, because these squares will be evaporating some water as it flows. So you can see we slowly, we were at 7s, now we're down 6s. So that's all now flowing. A lot of people are missing jobs, so I can turn my workshops back on. You're making rock thrones, that's good. You need to make uh, a couple of buckets. And then you can make barrels. You can never have enough barrels. You've got everything you need. You're making rock crafts. You're a smelter. So you have now done that. So I need to make a stockpile, which is just for bars and blocks. of bars and blocks of metal. You should have fuel. You've got coal. You've got coal. Why can you not make stuff? Please tell me I don't need to turn. Because I can only forge uh, metal equipment out of bars and I don't have many bars at the moment. All right, do I have to process... I'm going to check whether I have to process coal into something else. Uh, the fuel cycle in this game is brutal. It's brutal on purpose to be both realistic and annoy you into convincing you that you should use... Um, you should use magma. You should use magma instead of everything else. Uh, but, of course, magma is incredibly dangerous and difficult. So, I'm also going to make some bins. Then we'll go back to barrel. Cool. Um, I'm going to check on the coal thing after we have checked if we've drowned everyone with this farming. So let the water flow through. So far looking good. You can see if you hover over these squares, it now says a dusting of mud. If it says a dusting of mud, then you can farm there. Looks like the evaporation speed might cause me problems. Now oh, there's my natural save point. Got some people who aren't too happy. That's unfortunate. I'll check in on them. But, you know, some people who are really, really happy with life. You don't want people to get angry. Angry is bad. Angry causes dwarves to go psycho. And psycho dwarves are how are one of the many ways in which you can lose forts. All right, that looks like it's going well. Everyone should have a bedroom. I think I've designated enough plants. There's an awful lot of almonds here. I'm not sure why I'm not collecting the almonds. Do I not have storage room, perhaps? No, I seem to have storage room. Uh, we'll brew drink from fruit. 
that should convert some of the fruits that I'm collecting into fruit. I'm not sure. I don't think I have anyone rated to operate this fishery, which is unfortunate because I'd like to be able to convert. I'd like to be able to convert all of my. What I should probably do is go find this metalsmith and say. You should do tasks that are available to orderlies and fisher dwarves and hunters, and hopefully one of those covers actually building the bloody fishing workshop, because I'd like that done. All right, cool. So we're going to get mud over all of our squares. Have we done a good enough job of calculating this to eventually drain the water? The idea was that everything here would get up to a maximum of two once it all equalized out, but it might take a while for that to play through, which is fine. Got an awful lot of wood out here. Is anyone idle? No one is idle at the moment. That's good. Which means the next task to me is to figure out what on earth is going on with this coal. Okay, so some traders are here apparently, which is kind of cool. They're here to watch me flood myself, I presume. So what they'll do is they'll come over to the trade depot here. Um, I do not have a broker. I need to get a broker. How do I do that? Nobles and administration, blah, 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 blah. All right. I need a broker. This is vacant. A symbol. Of, I don't care about who. It, I don't care about what the position is. Okay. Does anyone have any relevant skills? Yes, our leader has relevant skills. So our leader is also going to be our broker. So basically, he's the person who goes over and he talks to. Uh, he apparently wants stuff in his quarters too. Uh, okay, so he's getting annoyed, I presume. So we need to give, uh, as your dwarves consider themselves more important, they demand more stuff. And apparently our boss man demands a bunch of stuff. What is that? It's a colony of honeybees. That's interesting. Um, so some traders should turn up, and when they do turn up, uh, here we are, diplomacy. I'm li your liaison. Alright, so I get to tell him what I want him to bring us next year. Um, okay. What do I want you to bring? That's an interesting question. Um, what about... Bring me cloth, because I'm not making my own cloth at the moment. Uh, and bring me seeds for these, just in case I run out. I'm always happy to buy more booze. I don't want stone, really. I want bags? Probably not. Not sure what else I might want. Maybe some backpacks? I don't. I don't really know. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, he is going to give us a markup, but he'll go get it. Uh, da -da -da. He wants prepared meals and drinks. Okay. Let's go broker requested at depot, and let's move goods to the depot. So we move the stuff that we potentially want to chain, uh, trade. So I'm not sure where my where my trade goods happen to be, like what those would be under. Still getting used to the new interface. Oh, we can sell body parts, uh, but they're not worth anything. Okay. I wonder if you'd take them anyway. It'd be a good way to make a first impression. We have a wheelbarrow. We've got some bins. Contains nine items, picks and weapons. No, I don't want to give that away. Those look like uncut gemstones. Don't want to give those away. There's a finished goods bin. This is what I want. So my dude has just been making random crap. It's worth a thousand, so let's move that in. 
uh, and we'll sell that. So we'll sell whatever is in that bin. It's worth about a thousand stuff, dwarf bucks, whatever you want to call them. Okay, they say they're still unloading, they'll be ready soon. All right, so we're going to be able to sell them uh, stuff and buy from them. Greetings. All right, so they're willing to sell us a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let's, I'm going to sell them a thousand, like, dwarf bucks worth of stuff. And then what have you got? Stones, chains, gems. I don't want gems and stuff. Those are all luxuries I don't really need. That bronze is quite cheap, so I might buy that. What do you got? You got a cat in a cage? Don't think I want that. There's a dwarven rum barrel, llama milk barrel, milk barrel, ale barrel. Right, let's just buy some extra booze and stuff to look. Just, just, you can never have enough booze. Weapons. I think I have weapons. I don't have clothing, and I don't have a stockpile for clothing yet. I don't have any armor, so that could be useful. Iron helm, steel cap. Gloves. Bags. What's in the bags? Dwarf, okay, red sand, plump helmet. Okay, that's, those are seeds. We'll grab that. I don't think we need any sand. I'll take a whole bin full of leather. I'll take several bins full of leather because we don't really have many animals to slaughter at the moment. Um, the cloth bin I can't afford. Oh, there's a whole bunch of meat here. Uh, and he's getting nervous because he kind of likes um, profit. So maybe I buy less meat. What did I buy up here that was expensive? Let's buy less milk. I really wish we could buy that cloth, but I can't afford it. Buy some plump helmets. Blackberries are cheap. Thread, cheap and I'm not making it myself. Cheese looks expensive. Alright, so... He says he won't trade at a loss, despite the fact he's making 350... He's making a 30% margin on the whole thing. Okay. Um, Alright, game, accurate. Um, I think if I'm going to cut anything, it's going to be llama's milk, one of the things of rum. There is simply not enough value. You, you are taking me for a ride. Like, screw these guys in particular. Is he going to literally demand that he double his money? I think he's going to demand that he doubles his money. I'll get rid of one bin of leather. Add back some plump helmets. Plum Helmet is a mushroom, by the way, if you're wondering what it is. It's your primary source of both booze and food. Dwarves love mushrooms. Um, your childish games have made me tired. Perhaps next time you'll take it seriously. How much do you want, mate? How much do you... Okay, we don't get a trade. Uh, 
All right, no trade, no trader needed at Depot. Apparently, they don't want to deal with us because we wouldn't like be completely ripped off. Fantastic. How's my farm going? Because apparently, I can't buy any food or leather, and they're going to charge me more for leather next time around. Okay, so the water is mostly looking good, although it's looking a bit high as far as I'm concerned. So one thing we can do, just to drain it a little bit. Is expand, is expand these squares a little bit to give the water somewhere to drain. So this will expand the lake essentially. Did that guy just go underwater? Oh, I guess the water's not particularly deep now, so it's not as threatening. Uh, so that should help us evaporate off the water. I might even have to expand it a little bit more if I want it to be fast. There we are. You can also expand the farm area down here. That's another way to do it. And at this point, I feel like uh, we can pro no, we won't unforbid the door. They can they can walk around the long way. Dining hall is expanded. Bedrooms are good. We're gonna have to look after Fancy Pants's bedroom soon, but I'm feeling like we're in a good position. Um, I did discover what was going on with the um, coal. By the way, I forgot my skill. So um, or memory of the game rather. So uh, you need to process coal into fuel. But that requires fuel, and I have no fuel. So you need to start with fuel in order to make more fuel. Uh, so really, what we're going to have to do here is furnaces, uh, wood furnace. And what we're going to do is make a furnace out of wood, a, a furnace in which we can burn wood. So this is just going to be a wood stockpile. Use that to produce charcoal and we're going to use charcoal to process the coal. A uh, bit all over the place but you know it is what it is. So we want bars blocks, we want coal, oh fine it's good. The I'm going to assume coal is the same as charcoal in this? I'm, I'm hoping so. Anyway, we're finding out together, but we're almost done. I feel like I've shown off a lot of the game, so I'm going to wind this up soon. I was just excited it dropped and I wanted to show it off. So as soon as we've got this water evaporated off and it's farm time, uh, I think that's where we will call it. So here we are. We're expanding this area out, which will dilute the water. And as the water evaporates off, we can then build a bunch of farm plots. So if I go workshops, farming... Farm plot. Oh, water at the location. I need to wait for it to entirely drain before I can build there. That makes sense. The water is currently still like... At this stage, they're like waddling through the water. Like one level 1, level 2 water, they're waddling. I might even... Like, I may as well. It's going to make the water evaporate faster. And I can always means I can always expand my farm more later on. But I believe one and two is where it evaporates. If it's only level one where it evaporates, I needed to build this area a lot bigger. If you're wondering why they disappear here, little up arrow means there's a ramp there, so they just they're just walking up the ramp. Cool. All right, I'm feeling I'm feeling good about life. I'm feeling good about life. It looks like a wood furnace is done. We're going to make charcoal. We're going to make like 10 units of charcoal. Melt um, and go from there. I presume I can... Anyway, I'll fix this up back in a second. Alright, things are going strangely well. The water is starting to uh, evaporate, which means at any point now, basically, uh, we could go workshops, farming, farm plot, and we could start growing stuff in this location is handy. 
that's going to be where our food comes from. We are going to want to seal this passage, of course, because we don't want anyone going through what used to be the lake and walking into our fort. But that's easily enough done. We might even wall it off, which is even stronger than using a door. This is now our underground farming area. We've got coal production happening, so charcoal is feeding the coal production. So we will have the ability to start doing metalworking if we continue. The bedrooms are expanding. I'm giving the expedition leader more stuff so he feels better about life. Uh, we're expanding the stockpiles uh, down there, so furniture stockpile, um, coal and fuel stockpile for overflow. So we're going to expand the stockpiling we're doing here. We're making the food stockpile larger. Uh, and then once that's done, the farm has somewhere to go. We're producing a crap ton of barrels. So you can see there's plenty of booze, like huge amounts of booze for us to consume, which is great to the point where I'm probably going to stop brewing for the moment just because we have so much booze and I'm pretty sure we don't have much, enough food at this point. Um, we're basically just collecting our food. And I've cleared a wide area around our base of particularly good plants, although we're using a whole bunch of almonds and acorns and things like that. So, you know, not too bad. We'll gather these plants down here. And we'll gather these plants up here. Out, just to just to keep ourselves fed, and the fisher dwarf obviously brings stuff in, which is kind of handy. But farming will come online in the near future, and life will be good. We've got a crafter producing us stuff to sell. Still haven't figured out how to make anything in the fish workshop, but that's okay. The butcher shop. Um, I think we can extract. That's about it. I don't think we have anything that we can extract from, but it is. We'll need to improve the rather pathetic dining room. Uh, the wood furnace isn't going to run for the moment, that's okay, because now that we're burning coal, we don't need to be burning wood. Um, and life is good. We'll build a few spare bedrooms. Um, down here is where we're going to put um, a burial, some burial chambers, in particular a burial chamber for our boss, because he feels like he deserves one. Because what does is, what is my expedition leader expect? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, what does he expect? Dining room, he expects a tomb. Chest. Yeah, so we'll need to give we'll need to give him like extra rooms that are allocated to him to keep him happy so he doesn't get all whiny and bitchy at everyone else. Um, who else is unhappy? The Fisher Dwarf, because he has to go outside all the time, I presume. Okay, so the ones that are unhappy are the ones that have to go outside. That makes sense. Uh, they don't like being outside, but their supply of fish is very good, except for the fact that I haven't figured out how to process it. I will if I keep playing the game. Um, so what would I normally do at this point? Well, we've been very lucky not to be attacked, so at this point I'd be thinking about defense in a big way. So um, a really basic defense might be just fortifying up, getting some weapons built so that your dwarves can fight people if they come up. A more complex way of doing things might be to start setting up some sort of murder engineering contraption. Um, likely taking, at this stage, I think taking advantage of the, uh, the water that I have here. So maybe building some sort of like reservoir cistern plus an area where the enemies want to go and then a way to use machinery to lock them in and drain water. I don't know. You could you could do some creative stuff, but a wall, a wall and some basic military structure would be useful at this point. Obviously, we want the farm to start producing because once you've got food, you also have booze because you turn food into booze. Um, food and under, underground and some basic defenses means you're at least sustainable and you're ready for the first things to come attack you. Um, and then from there, the world is your oyster. I've started removing some of the... I've apparently removed too much wall here, so this door is no longer protecting us, so it would in fact need a door here. That's all right, that happens. Um, remo I'm removing these at the moment so that people can't climb inside the wall. I'll put a little wall around this entrance. That's all good. Uh, and then I'd start thinking about next steps, and there are so many next steps. That's the problem. There are so many competing priorities in Dwarf Fortress, like... Uh, the everything. There are so many production change. Uh, your dwarves require so many different things. Like, we will be producing food, right? But we're not producing cloth and leather. We're not replacing clothing. Our metalworking, we haven't done any metalworking yet at all. Um, and even then, our metalworking is based on a very limited supply of coal and metal at the moment. So you need to make that renewable. There's so many things to do, so many things to consider. And i just got to say, so far, it's running smooth, it's intuitive, it's easy to use. I'm going to call it now, this is improved markedly over the base version of the game. 
So if you're interested in like a weird colony fortress builder and incredibly deep and involved game, this is Dwarf Fortress. I loved this for a long time. I haven't played it in many, many years. It's great to come back to it and give it a go. I'd encourage you to do the same. Hope you enjoyed and cheers.